May it please your lordship. Lord, I will cover only three points now, my lord. The interpretation of Article 370, which according to us is the correct interpretation, subject to, my lord, meeting with your lordship's approval. Second, State Reorganization Act. And third, <coughs> what are the parameters of the power of legislation during Article 356 is in force? There are some judgments which would render assistance to your lordships, and Lord, I would read those judgments. Lord, before I start with 370, Lord, your lordships would recall the submission made by some of the learned councils, my lord, on the other side was that there was an assurance given to the princely states and in the statute. There was an assurance given to the princely states as a result of which and according to the petitioner in lieu of which they chose to join the Union of India and therefore Article 370 is the result of that promise which the Dominion of India then and subsequently Union of India made and therefore 370 is to be treated as permanent. Uh, I'll deal with that contention first because then, my lord, 370, it would be easier for me, my lord, to persuade your lordships the view which, according to the government, is the correct view of interpretation. Lord, this question arose for the first time in the case of Madhav Rao's India, where mm -hmm. the government withdrew the privy purses. At the privy purses, where a bargain in lieu of which the princely state exceeded to Union of India. There were two state, uh, constitutional provisions, namely Article 291 and 362, which provided for the privy purses. But the central government exercised the powers under Article 366 and deleted the term princely states and construed that since princely states no longer exist, there is no question of privy purses or other privileges. The definition was princes. The lordships are not required to go into that question right now. Lord, this honorable court allowed that petition that so long as these two provisions remain 
on the constitution, you cannot take away the privy purses by merely changing Article 366, which is the definition clause. Their contention is that this is what has been done by altering Article 367. Yes. In, the, in our case, they are trying to bring in on bring our case on parity with the previous purses case also, one. Yes, but they are their main plank of the content contention is that this was 370 was in lieu of our exceeding, right. and therefore you could not have done it. But the after the judgment in Madhavra of India, the government repealed or uh, Lord, uh, that is a constitutional amendment constitutional amendment under 360 correct Lord, i'm saying that uh, mr shankar i was just about to answer that it was a constitutional amendment Lord, government repealed them so the root was taken away that is namely article 291 and 362 That came to be challenged before this honorable court and the matter went before the constitution bench in case of Raghunath Rao Ganpat Rao versus Union of India Malos. The judgment which your losses would find Raghunath Ganpat Rao Raghunath Rao Ganpat Rao versus Union of India 1994 supplementary 1 SCC 191. But will we not also have to look at the original Madhura Sindhya? It, it is discussed here. Okay. It is discussed here and distinguished. With because Madhura Sindhya places limitations on the power of the union government to use the uh, root of an interpretation or definition provision to abrogate substantive, substantive constitutional rights. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely a correct legal position, but for 370, which provides that you can use Not this. Three. That's, your, that's the distinction you're making. That, that's the distinction, but there is one more distinction. But you'll have to then deal with the point as to why was it necessary to take recourse to 367 then? I'll, I'll that when I come to 370, the interpretation, I'll deal with that. But here, in substance, if, if I were to summarize the ratio of this judgment in one line, the court said, that any change in the constitution which brings everyone at par can never be faulted with princely states after formation of the constitution of India lost their special status and the word fraternity used in the preamble has to be given some meaning and this has the impact of bringing all citizens at par. My Lord, kindly see, my Lord, that is volume right, 7. Uh, we, where will we find that in the case law compilation? Volume sir? 7 of case law compilation, PDF page 537. I will read relevant part, my Lord, uh, considering, my Lord, the time constraint. Uh, I, I, I intend to complete, my Lord, on this side of the lunch, my Lord. Mr. Solicitor, we also, after you finish this, go back to Madhavarya 1. Correct. Because if you don't go through it, then you know, then obviously there'll be you are, uh, there'll be a front in the rejoinder that you know you have not dealt with Madhav Rao. But uh, let us see how Madhav Rao is dealt with in with here, my Lord, first of all. But I will go to Madhav Rao one, but there is nothing because that Lord kindly come to page one so that your lordships have my Lord, the background. Uh, the two writ petitions, your lordship gets, my lord, it's paid 543, PDF 543. Your lordship gets that, my lord? Yes, I am there. These two writ petitions call in question the constitutional validity of the Constitution 26th Amendment. Just one second, one second. I'm sorry, my Lord Justice Hawaii and Justice Surekant, my Lord Gates. Volumes 
case law volume 7 at 543 minutes the beginning of the judgment yes these are two red petitions call in question the constitutional validity of the constitution 26th amendment act inter alia on the ground that it violates the basic structure an essential feature of the constitution of india and is therefore outside the scope and ambit of constituent powers under article 368 in addition certain directions or suitable orders are sought for declaring that petitioners continue to be the rulers of the successor rulers or the successor rulers as the case may be and directing the respondent union of india to continue to recognize their personal rights amenities privileges as rulers of their erstwhile state and also continue to pray, pay privy purses. Your Lordship, may my Lord kindly come to the bottom of the para, uh, which starts with my Lord. By the said instrument, the petitioner accepted the matter specified. Does your Lordship get you know, some tenth para from the bottom? My Lord Justice, go away, my Lord. And by the said instrument, the petitioner accepted the matter specified in schedule thereto as matters with respect to which the Dominion Legislature may make laws for the state and declared his intent that the Governor General of India, the Dominion Legislature, the Federal Court, and any other I Dominion. Read, authority, I, mean, I couldn't get that. Where are you reading? I mean, I I'm sorry, Malod. I'm reading at Malod page 543. Of the Malod, paragraph 3 at Classitum F. F, 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 F yes. Classitum F, my lord, your lordship. Just one line above By classitum F. By the said instrument. By the said instrument. My lord, court is referring to the instrument of accession signed by uh, the IOA the, instrument of accession. Sri Raghunath Rao, uh, my lord, or, or maybe his uh, uh, ancestor. By the said instrument, the petitioner accepted the matter specified in the schedule thereto as matters with respect to which the dominion legislature may make laws for the state and declared his intent that the governor general of india the dominion legislature the federal court and any other dominion authority established for the purpose of dominion shall subject to terms of the instrument exercise in relation to urundwad state uh, such functions as may be vested in so and so so and so so and so of the instrument provided that nothing therein shall be deemed to commit the ruler in any way to acceptance of any future constitution of India or to fetter his discretion to enter into agreements with the government of India under any such future constitution. Subsequently, a number of rulers executed agreements of merger and transferred the administration of their states to the dominion of India. The merger agreement was in the form given in the white paper on Indian states and it was executed in so and so. They were not para four. You know, the, uh, this one.
there's a little bit of a background about Kurundwad state. Oh. Kurundwad is a very small town, very close to Sangli. And uh, Kurundwad is on the banks of the river Krishna. And there's a very famous, uh, there's a place, a place of pilgrimage called uh, Narsubachiwadi. Where lots of pilgrims come from across the country. And once in a year, the, the Krishna will rise and sweep the whole town clean, you know. Because sweep the, the town uh, clean. And because the Krishna is very, and, and the lands are extremely fertile because of the Krishna river. Uh, right on the banks of the uh, Krishna. Maybe that may be the reason why the human habitation must have established there near yeah, the sources of uh, water and yeah. all, all earlier uh, or know, earlier civilizations are on the bank of the river. river. Look, now your losses may come to page five forty eight. The arguments. Here, two constitutional provisions were dispensed with by, by, were repealed by way of a definition clause. Not like, unlike Lord interpretation clause. Lord, here kindly bear one factor in mind. 370, sub article 3, has an inbuilt extinguishing provision. 370, sub article 3, is a provision whereby 370 can be extinguished. That's the distinction. But I am on a, a little wider argument made by the other side. Para 19, the submission, my Lord Justice, the submission advanced by Mr. Sorabji, the learned senior counsel, appearing on behalf of the writ petitioner in writ petition number so and so are thus Article 291, 362, and 366, double 2. Well, 366, double 2 is the definition clause defining princes then of the constitution were integral part of the constitutional scheme and form the important basic structure since the underlying purpose of these articles was to facilitate submission of new order and ensure organic unity of India. These articles guaranteed pledges to the rulers based on elementary principles of justice and in order to preserve the sanctity of solemn agreements. It was only by the incorporation of these articles that the unity of India was achieved by getting all the rulers within the fold of the constitution and that the deletion of these articles has damaged and demolished the very basic structure of the constitution. The covenants entered into were in the nature of contracts which had been guaranteed constitutionally and affirmed by making the privy purse an expenditure charged under the Consolidated Fund of India and the use of expression guaranteed or assured by the government of Dominion of India to any ruler M as embodied in Article 291 and the expression guarantee and assurance given under such covenants or agreements as is referred to in Clause 1 of Article 291 as comprised in Article 362 was a permanent feature of the Constitution reflecting the intention of the founding fathers of the Constitution and as such these two articles should have been kept intact. Please pause here for a minute. Alert. These articles even remotely did not suggest that they are temporary. As against Malot 370, which by its very definition says and te it's temporary. And I will also Malot be able to attempt to demonstrate that it could never have been but for temporary. Such a drastic uh, provision. The visionary fathers and mothers of the constitution would never have kept it permanent. But two organs can change the constitution the way they like. But that's a separate argument. Please see. Learned, according to the learned council, the deletion of these articles amounted to a gross breach of principles of political justice enshrined in the preamble by depriving or taking away from the princes the privy purses which, <coughs> which were given to them as consideration for surrendering all their sovereign rights and contributing to the unity and integrity of the country and that the deletion of these articles by the Impune Amendment Act is arbitrary, unreasonable, and violative of Article 14 of the Constitution. Further, it has been urged that rulers exceeded to the dominion of India an executed instrument of accession and covenants in consideration of the pledges and promises enshrined in Article 291 and 362, and that the Impugned Amendment Act is beyond and outside the scope and ambit of the constitutional power of Parliament to amend the Constitution 
as provided under 368. Mr. Sorabji, uh, in his additional written submissions, has further urged that without the cooperation of rulers, not only the territory of India, its population, the composition of the state legislatures, the Lok Sabha, the Rajya Sabha, but also constitution that was adopted on November 26, 49, would have been basically different and that India, that is Bharat, would have been fundamentally different from the Bharat that came into being. But kindly see my lord, para 22. Mr. Salve, the learned senior counsel contended that he was also for the petitioner, my lord, with uh, Mr. Uh, lord Surabji. But Mr. estoppel doesn't apply to him. Pardon me? Estoppel doesn't apply to him based on what he argued in that case. <laughs> well, that's the uh, lord, privilege on this side. My lord. <laughs> We are not bound by our arguments, my lord. Mr. Salvin Lennit, senior counsel, contended that Article 291 and 362, when... Yes. Mr. Salve, the learned counsel, appearing contended that Article 291 and 362 were incorp when incorporated were intended to grant recognition to the solemn promises on the strength of which the former rulers agreed to merge with the Indian dominion and the guarantee of privy purses and certain privileges was as a just quid pro quo for surrendering their sovereignty and dissolving their states. It has been stated that constitutional guarantees and assurances promising uh, con a continuance of privy purse as enshrined in the agreements and covenants were an integral part of the constitutional scheme and an important part of the constitutional structure and they were to be fully honored and not cast away on a false morass of public opinion or buried under the acts of states but the impune ex facie has abolished and destroyed those constitutional provisions of article 291 and 362 affirming the guarantees and assurances given to the rulers under those agreements. Then your officers may kindly come to para 23. It is further emphasized that Sardar Patel who made it clear that according to the vision and views of the constitution makers, the guarantees of privy purses, privileges, etc. were perfectly in keeping with view the democratic ethos and principles of Indian people. Then the learned council stated that views expressed in the constituent assembly were unanimously accepted and there was no dissent and that in fact the closing remarks in the debate of Dr. Patabi Sitaramaya were only remarkably confirmatory of the permanence and indivisibility of the aforesaid guarantee and assurances but also went a long way in determining that the said guarantees and assurances have come to a stay, come to stay as an integral and untouchable part of the basic structure of the constitution. Finally it was said that there can be no basic structure of a constitution divorced from the historical evolution of precepts and principles on which the constitution is founded. <clears throat> Any effort to determine the basic structure of the constitution without keeping a finger on historical pulse of the constitution may well lead to substantial injustice. According to him, if the historical approach to the test of basic structure is kept in view, the guarantees and assurances of the privy purses privileges, etc., granted by the constitution makers by incorporating Article 291, 362 and 36622 in the constitution framed by them would, without any doubt or dispute, emerge in their own right as basic features of the constitution which cannot be abrogated or any annihilated by any constitutional amendment, etc. Now your lordship, I am allowed kindly see para 28 at page 551. 